Welcome to lesson one, part four, the final video in lesson one. In this lesson, we will look at how to add rivers and objects to the world. Let's begin. Here is the world I created in the video for lesson one, part three. The first tool we will look at is the water tool, which is used to add water, lava and other types of fluid to the world. It is important to note that before you start using the water tool, you need to ensure that you have a load a section of the land so that it can be filled. On my world, I have this valley. To fill with water, I simply hold down the left mouse button while hovering over the section of land I wish to fill. If I overfill the valley, the rest of the land will be flooded. To lower the water level, just hold down the right mouse button and the water will go back down. If we look back at the water tool, you should notice the icon above it. When we select this, we get the options for different types of fluid we can add to our world. Here, I am selecting lava, and then all I have to do to replace the water is to unfill the valley using the right mouse button, then fill it up again using the left mouse button, and you will notice we now have lava. Now, no world is complete without objects, such as trees, buildings, and even characters. To add these and more, we need to use the object tool. When this tool is selected, you need to left click on the ground in the position you wish to place an object, and this will display a wheel of options. Notice on the wheel that some segments have an arrow on the top. This means that clicking on them will give more options. Let's select the tree option. Another wheel appears giving four options for trees. When I select a tree, it will be added to the world. A problem with many objects when they appear on your world is that they are set to a default size. Like you can see here, this tree is too large for this world. To change the setting of an object, ensure the object tool is still selected, then hover the mouse over the object itself. You will notice a number of color circles appear at the top of the screen. Using the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard, you can change the color of this object to make sure that it matches the color or theme of your game. Clicking the right mouse button on an object will open a menu. There are two options to show you now. The first is the change size option. When clicked, a slider bar will appear. Slide the bar to increase or decrease the size of the tree. The other option you should use is the rotate option. This allows an object to be swiveled around so it points in the direction you wish. Please have a play with all the tools you've learnt in lesson one and discover new things. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in lesson two.